All right. Last time we set up a very basic ggplot command. This time we're going to get a little bit uh, more into it. We're going to actually see what we can really do with this function. Okay, so uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to load in, as before, the tidyverse. We're going to load in Haven. We're going to bring in our crime data. Okay, so uh, we are then going to start setting up some ggplot commands. And let's go ahead and just start with one that we already did. Uh, so we're going to first, we're going to do a scatter plot. Um, and so we mentioned last time that one of the things that you need in your ggplot command is the geometry. And you might have noticed that in the scatter plot that we made before, we used the uh, function geom underscore point. That it was, of course, the geometry that we were using. We were saying we want a point based geometry here, right? Now, ggplot has lots and lots and lots of different geometries. Uh, and today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over some of those different geometries, the ones that I think are most useful in economics. Uh, there are, of course, many more. Uh, I would recommend going and checking out the R documentation, just looking at the different geometries that are available to you. Maybe there's something that you like that you didn't see here. But we're going to go ahead and start with the one that I use the most often, which is the point geometry. Uh, so as always, we're going to say ggplot. We're going to use our crime data. Uh, I'm going to say that I want my aesthetic to be with uh, uh, police per capita on the x-axis, uh, with crime rate on the y-axis. In fact, let's make it a log crime rate on the y-axis. Okay. Now that we have our ggplot set up, we can add in a geometry, a point geometry, geom underscore point. Uh, now, of course, there are many different options available. If you do go to help geom point, you'll be able to see a lot of those options. If we go help geom point, there we go. Uh, you can see that there are lots and lots of different options that we can have in here about the different uh, positioning of the points, the, the shape of the points, all this sort of stuff that we can put in here uh, that we might be able to want. Okay, but if we do this just by itself, we, of course, get the same scatter sort of scatter plot that we did last time, right? So there's our scatter plot. That's what we can do with geom underscore point. Of course, that is not the only geometry. Uh, one other kind of geometry that we might be interested in is a bar graph. So let's do a bar graph. Now you might be able to guess what we're going to want to do, uh, what kind of, what the name of the, of the bar graph geometry might be. It's right, it's geom underscore bar. So we just need some sort of data that fits in a bar graph. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and this time, instead of having, uh, we only need an X uh, coordinate on our aesthetic. Okay, uh, so uh, let's get something that can go into a bar graph. Let's say urban. All right, so you can either be urban or not, and we're going to have a bar graph. So we can see here uh, we're graphing. You know, this we got th this many uh, this many urban observations. We have this many non-urban observations. Right, clearly most of them are urban. Okay, so we can do a bar graph. Uh, what if we want to do a distribution of a, you know, a, a broader variable, maybe something with continuous. Maybe we want to get a, a histogram, for example, of police presence. So let's get a histogram. Uh, once again, uh, with the exact same idea, we also don't need a y-axis here. Let's get police per capita. And this time we're just going to do geom histogram. So you can already see that, that you know, as we go through this, a lot of this is interchangeable, right? We're, we're really using the same sort of basis, and then we're just adding on different geometries based on whatever kinds of geometries make sense with the aesthetic that we've picked, right? That's the whole idea of ggplot, or the grammar of graphics, right? That we are uh, able to build these graphs up in a way that makes sense and cohesively bring everything together. Everything is sort of speaking the same language as everything else, right? So we can put out our... Uh, Histogram, it sort of picked our number of bins automatically, but of course we can uh, do that with one of the many options that are in here. I really recommend before you do any of these, you know, go in and just look at the options. Maybe there's something that you can tweak that you didn't even know was something that you could tweak, right? Uh, of course, histograms aren't the only thing. We could also do a density plot. Okay, same idea as here, uh, except instead of geom histogram, we're going to do geom density, okay? Uh, so it's got a nice sort of density plot right there. It's got the shape. Uh, now, one thing that you might notice on the density plot is that it's got this sort of line on the base here. I'm not a huge fan of that line. I want to get rid of it. Uh, all we have to do uh, is get rid of that baseline. Uh, instead of geom, geom density is stat density. There we go. So now it's just, guys got a, got a full a filled thing in there. Uh, you, know, you can tweak it if you just want the line without the fill. Again, there's a lot of options here. I'm just sort of going through these one at a time. All right. Now, something else we can notice here is that, well, uh, you know, this is, 
you got we, we stretch way out to the right, but uh, you know all the action is really here in the middle. And if we want to get a better look at that, we can of course limit the the window range. Uh, there are of of all the options in ggplot, I'm going I'm to go ahead and do this one, and I, I'm going to do this to show that the way one of the ways that you can manipulate ggplot is by adding on things, right? So we we got to what we have here by doing ggplot plus our geometry, right? Uh, and we're going to do that again. We're going to do a plus to add on some other some other options that we might have. So I'm just going to copy this in, uh, and so we're going to limit the window. And the window limiting happens to be with the uh, uh, chord Cartesian option. So chord Cartesian, we're going to limit the Cartesian coordinates of our uh, uh, graph here. Uh, so it's going to be x lim, we're limiting it. And if you're wondering how I know all of this, it's because I read the help file, right? How, I, how I'm actually using this. I didn't, you know, just guess what these uh, commands were. You always want to read the help file. That's where all the, the syntax is. We're going to say that this can be only go from 0 to 0.005. If we do that again, you can see that we get a, a much better look at where the action actually is. Uh, now, of course, if you were going to present a graph like this, you would put a note on there that said, yeah, we cut off the right tail here, right? So we're not showing you all the, all the, all the, all the data. Let's also go ahead and do a line graph. Now, the most common way that you might do a line graph is if you're graphing some, the value of something over time. So we need to get that in here. So uh, let's go ahead and, and use our, our dplyr skills to build something that's over time. So if we look at our crime data, uh, we notice, of course, that it's panel data. We have multiple observations per county. We have multiple observations per year. What if we want to get the average police per capita over time? Well, of course, that would be crime piped to group by year piped to summarize police per capita is the mean of police per capita. Okay. Now, if we do this, of course, it's going to give us this table, right? In the year 81, here's the average police per capita. In year 82, here's the police per capita and so on. Uh, so we can just take this and stick it in our ggplot. So we got ggplot. We're going to stick our data right in there. Uh, we're going to do an aesthetic where X is the year and Y is the police per capita. Okay. And uh, then we're going to add on our geometry. Let's go ahead and add on a geom underscore line, which of course will give us a line graph. And so we can see the average uh, police per capita per, uh, over the years graphed out right here. One last geometry that I'm going to show you, and again, there are many that I am leaving out, uh, is geom underscore smooth. And geom uh, smooth is going to be the thing that you can use to plot out uh, your regressions, right? If you want to do a linear regression. Uh, so the way we can do this, Let's go back to our scatter plot here. Uh, and let's say instead of a scatter plot, we want to plot out our reg a regression of log crime rate on police per capita. Uh, plot a regression. All right. So instead of geom point, we're going to do geom smooth. Uh, now, what geom smooth by itself is going to do is it's not going to plot out a linear regression. It's going to plot out a low S fitted curve, okay, which this is not something we use all the time in economics. Uh, but of course, GM Smooth does not just for lowest curves. We, have, we can pick other methods, uh, and we can just pick the LM method, and that will plot a nice straight line, and it'll have confidence intervals around it exactly as we want it to be, or prediction intervals around it, rather. Okay, um, that is the basics of it, right? So those that's just you know, running through really quickly some of the geometries that we can do. And there's a lot of options here. And I'm really just doing this to give you an introduction to the main ones that you're likely to use. Uh, you're going to use scatter plots a lot. You might use line graphs pretty regularly. You might want to plot a, a linear regression out. Uh, and of course, density plots and histograms are also very useful too. Uh, so just getting you used to these things and, you know, get started. Try building some ggplot uh, commands for yourself with maybe your own data uh, and see what you come up with. And when you come to, to something that you want to graph but can't find, you know, go looking in the help files and you'll find it. Because it's not just the standard kind of graphs that you might expect to see. There's a lot of other stuff in there too. Heck, you can draw with ggplot too. You can tell it to draw uh, shapes and lines and you could draw a picture if you really felt like it. You could have it do a box over here and a line and a line and a line. You can draw, I don't know, a picture of Santa Claus if you felt like it and it was Christmas and you had nothing better to do. But anyway, that's something you can do on your own. Uh, that's what we got for introducing you to the geometries. 
Uh, in the next video, uh, what we're going to be doing is taking some of these geometries and overlaying them. It's pretty common to want to have more than one thing plotted at once, so that's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, for example, taking a scatter plot and putting a regression line over on top of it. Okay, that's it. I will see you at that video. Thank you.